Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Today, I've got a really fun one for you. I have a team that I built that consists of some absolute OGs that have been around on the channel for like 10 years. As always, hit that like button on the video if you enjoy, and let's get into the match. So, from looking at the team preview, it was a pretty safe bet that they were going to lead off with the Ambipom, with the fake out nonsense and the U-turn. It's a pretty predictable lead, but still extremely scary nonetheless. Um, so I decided to lead off with my Paul, the, the absolute unit hippo, uh, the Slowbro is here, and I pretty much have designated this thing in this match to be able to handle uh, this Ambipom as best as possible. The rest of my team really does not enjoy this thing, and pretty much any time you're going against Ambipom, you're going to have a, a rough time. So he decides to take his cow utter ass hands on out of here and goes for the U-turn. I know that I still live with above half after... Uh, a fake out and a U-turn, and that's kind of the main reason I lead with Paul, is because then, after they decide to switch into a better matchup, I can go ahead and switch out uh, and activate my regenerator ability, which gives me a whole bunch of health back. So, uh, I just go for the Scald on the switch, looking at their team, nothing really wants to come in on a Scald. Uh, try to get a potential burn, as he actually ends up bringing in the Espeon. So, I obviously don't want to stay in here, because I'm expecting something like a Shadow Ball. And the unfortunate news is nothing on my team wants to deal with this pussy, for real. I decide to go into free hugs. He's excited because he's like, I got a hug for you. Um, but he says, on the contrary, I have a grass knot for yo dumbass. And Kabutops goes down early. So that's my rapid spinner. Uh, I figured I could bring this thing in. And if it wasn't max speed, I could deal with some stuff or potentially Aqua Jet. Um, regardless, I just am down a mon early. And Espeon is a very scary special threat for me to deal with. Um, but at least now I have a free switch into whatever I'd like. And I decide to go into the Hell Salad, who, to my surprise, actually ends up outspeeding. This was an interesting play, uh, primarily because I'm actually plus speed nature, whereas if that was a timid Espeon, he would have actually outsped me. But it turned out to be modest, and I outspeed it by like five points, which is pretty sweet. So, Shaman lets the kitty enjoy a nice low carb salad from Hell, and now I have to get out of here because they ended up going into Mawile on the empty battlefield. So, I'm thinking if they decide to go Mawile against a Shaman, it's probably going to be Fire Fang. But regardless, Slowbro is able to eat up pretty much anything this thing wants to throw at me. Unless it's, you know, some weird, like, special Mawile. But, you know, it's obviously not. So, Slowbro has an, a fantastic time being tickled by the Fire Fang. And uh, I just basically stand here and go for the Scald. As the Play Rough actually does a nice chunk of damage. And I do need to conserve this Slowbro because it's, uh, it's a great answer to pretty much the rest of their team. Um, everything at least except the Yan Mega. So, uh, I am aware of that fact, and I should probably try to save this Slowbro as much as possible, especially with that Ambipom, uh, you know, still lurking in the back, ready to pimp slap some hoes. So, here I decide to go for the Slack Off, and I figure, you know, obviously he was probably just going to attack. He ends up going for the Sucker Punch, um, and I'm able to just take a nice little nap -a rooney here and get all of my health back, and this thing is looking menacing. I know he doesn't look like much, but I'll tell you what, this little pink bastard is an absolute threat. And if you do not have a correct answer for it, you're gonna you're gonna have a bad time. Um, but he goes for the Sucker Punch, I figure this thing's burnt, and a Sucker Punch is not gonna do anything regardless. Plus, I'm gonna need to switch out um, eventually anyway, so the Regenerator's gonna do its thing. So I just stay in, go for another Scald, and I am able to take care of the Mawile. What the fuck is Mawile even based off of anyway? I swear to god I have no idea. But... That ugly ass thing is taken care of and Paul is putting in the finest of work. However, my arch nemesis comes in which is going to be the Yan Mega and a bug buzz is going to hurt a lot. So I obviously have to switch and I have a plan. I know you're thinking switching into Golem here is a bad idea. However, check this shit out. So I bring in Snowball. Um, probably like the funniest Pokemon design ever. They're like, what if we, it was a boulder and he just has limbs. I don't know. Gen 1, baby. So, he goes for the Bug Buzz here. It knocks me down to Sturdy. And obviously, obviously this thing is faster. However, I am actually Custap Berry uh, Golem here. So, I'm able to eat that delicious Custap. And this allows me to outspeed. Hit him with a Stone Edge. Luckily, do not miss. And then down goes the Yan Mega. So, that is Slowbro's enemy out of the way. And now, it's looking like the battle is pretty much opened up for Slowbro to be able to kind of take the, take the wheel here. So, um, in comes the... Uh, the Swampert. Now I'm thinking I might even have a chance to outspeed here. I don't know what type of Swampert this is. I go for the Stealth Rock and actually do get it off. Uh, surprisingly, I'm able to roll my way into some speed there and get a nice little nice little, little hazards up. It's going to help against the Magmortar. It's going to try to limit Ambipom switches. I don't know. It can't hurt. Um, but now I'm like, okay. It's pretty much time to die. This Golem did exactly what it needed to do. 
Uh, luckily, they didn't have their hazards up before that Custap play, because Custap with the Sturdy can be ruined pretty easily with uh, just a little, just a little, one little rocky boy, which Golem should not be affected by. My dude is literally a rock, but that's not, not how shit works. Anyway, I got, you know, a decent amount of chunk damage off on this, off, off on this fella here. And of course, I do have the Grass type and Shaman, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going into the Frostitute because my girl has not had any limelight, and I decide I could probably make some stuff happen. Uh, with the Jinx. I got the pointy thing coming out of my dress. No idea what the hell that is. Game Freak got some explaining to do. But I'm just going to go for the lovely kiss. Put this thing to sleep and I can try to kind of... I could probably knock it out with just a couple psychics. Uh, I guess depending on what type of Swampert build this is. But always nice to land the lovely kiss. Watching Jinx do her thing. And now with this Swampert asleep, it's time to show this Swampert exactly what is under this dress. And that is some damage from a Psychic. So I decided to go for the Psychic because I'm thinking if I get this special defense drop, that would be a two-hit KO, I believe. Um, and surprisingly, I actually do get it. So things are going to, according to plan, but the Swampert says, never mind. I'm just going to go ahead and wake the fuck up on the first turn and Frostitute goes down. So Swampert did not appreciate the Jinx funny business and down I go. So now I at least get to switch into whatever I would like. And I'm going to go into Slowbro here because I decide I'm going to let Paul finish what my dude started. They lost their answer, or their at least their check to the Slowbro, which was the Yen Mega. And once that's ha once you lose your check to the Slowbro, it's like trying to have sex with a rhinoceros that does not love you anymore. You're going to have a bad time. <laughs> so this thing comes in. I know I can take an Earthquake easily. Obviously, I'm, I'm pretty much max defense here. Uh, it just barely gives me a little scratch -a -roo. I hit him with a Scald and with a special defense drop that is able to take care of it. So now at this point, it's down to Magmortar and Ambipom. And with Slowbro being in here, the Ambipom is kind of deterred. It's not going to be able to uh, do too much with like a fake out U-turn combo. I'll still be able to live uh, and then hit a Scald if they decide to go into the Magmortar. So Six Finger Monkey comes in and I'm just going to click Slack Off because we know the fake out's coming. And then on the next turn, I should be able to live a double hit after uh, Leftover Recovery. And if it does decide to U-turn, then I can scare the Magmortar with a Scald. And essentially, Slowbro is just out here being an absolute dick like he does best. He decides to go for the double hit, but it's not enough. After a Slack Off, I'm looking nice and healthy to then start firing off some Psychics or Scalds. Plus, this whole time, I've been conserving my Scarf Metacham, who is kind of a second option to being able to take care of this Ambipom. I know it can outspeed as long as it doesn't have fake outs to use. It's pretty much no issue. And then I can also take care of the Magmortar as well. So my plan is essentially just to switch into Shaman, let this thing die, and then let Metacham do his thing. But the monkey has had enough. The slow bro was too much for my dude, and you love to see it. So let this be a lesson that if you're up against a Slowbro, make sure you keep a win condition against the fool, because he will, he will make you pay. 